Hello everyone and welcome back to another chat of the week and today I decided that it would be quite cool to share with you guys how my style has evolved since I became interested in fashion, styling and since I became a blogger basically. So you guys should know that things change, things change for the better. So before I go on, please give this video a thumbs up already because I'm going to be talking shit about myself, I'm going to be talking shit about my outfits, so please appreciate it, okay? Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more style videos, and let's dig into the past. So I basically divided my style history in seasons. I thought it would make it easier as well to separate the photos and so you guys can have a good timeline of things. So the first season for me was being a complete color whore. All my outfits needed bright colors and each outfit had a theme that was related to the color. So this is what I'm talking about. For instance, this outfit. You have the pops of yellow, which was the theme of the outfit. I even like this outfit. I will change the shoes as of today, but I will definitely not wear those pants today. But the outfit looks okay, and this was my profile picture for a while on Facebook. And here we have just a lot of colors. Here the theme was clearly red, brown, and romance. Here, oh my god, it was just... I bought these shoes in a Chinese website, and I loved them. I was like, when I wear these to the club, everyone will look at them. And you can see that this outfit is a bit more masculine with the tie. I used to create thematic outfits, you know, but still wearable. That was my thing. This one, the skirt is actually a t-shirt, and I'm actually still proud of this outfit because it doesn't look like a t-shirt. This one was one of my favorite outfits because obviously it didn't have that much color, so I'm still proud of this one. This is another color whore outfit. It's just too many colors, man. I was happy back then, okay? I was happy. I wasn't in a dark place as I am right now. <laughs> Always wearing like black and muted colors. Look at those shoes, guys. Those were fake Jeffrey Campbell Litas because I couldn't afford the real ones, so I got a Chinese version. And yeah, these are just some of the examples of how much of a color whore I was, which is completely opposite of what I am today, but we will get there. After my color whore phase, I went through the trend whore phase. This was around 2011, 2012. I just wanted to buy everything that the bloggers were wearing. Lookbook.nu was definitely the main reason why I started a blog because I was like, wow, people have outfit ideas and I can put mine here too. I never got more than 20 hypes, by the way, which is a bit sad, but um, lookbook.nu was detrimental for me in discovering style, exploring style. Another website that I used to like was Trentation and Instagram came. So with Instagram it was more about, oh, this is being worn a lot. I want to get like a cheaper version of that top to make an outfit for my blog. For instance here, graphic tees were a big thing again. So I grabbed a graphic tee that said Paris. And printed pants, tribal prints, Aztec prints were huge at that time. So this is why I'm having these pants on. Here, neon was on trend, that's why I chose the neon colored necklace and holographic was also on trend, that's why I chose the sandals but up until today I love this look it's something that I would still wear with a longer vest and then here I remember it was trendy to take a boyfriend shirt and tie it on your waist and I thought that was really cool and this photo guys, I was alone in Singapore and then I set up my tripod to take this photo and then when I looked at the museum I realized that the people inside the museum could see me, so I felt a bit embarrassing, <laughs> embarrassed for my DIY blogger moment uh, while people were watching me, but it was in Singapore, who cares? The trend here was clearly boyfriend jeans. These were my first pair ever of boyfriend jeans and I was in love with them. I still have them. It was all about incorporating one trending piece on my outfits. Here, it was that sporty chic era, baseball tees, and I was like, I need to get one of those to make an outfit with a hat. and. Here it is. This was more about the boots, wearing boots and dresses. It, it became really popular around that time as well, so I was like, I need to wear boots and dresses. This is another basketball tee trend that I also hopped on. And this is the overall trend that I hopped on as well. So for this one, the trend was definitely jogger pants. When jogger pants became wearable with like casual outfits, I was like, yes, I need that. And yeah, these are a few examples of my trend whore phase in which I planned my shopping and my outfits for the gram and I planned it according to trend. I mean, I was suffering, guys. Safe to say I was buying cheaper items just for the sake of the photo. It was a good phase, it taught me a lot and it definitely shaped me to become the shopper I am today. So while I was in uni for the first half of my course, I became really depressed. And surprisingly enough, when I was depressed, my style changed completely because I became very unhappy, I became very, 
you know, mad at life, mad at everybody. So why on earth would I wear colorful stuff to make other people happy? Like, no, I wanted to wear black. I wanted to wear white, neutral colors that would make me go unnoticed. The last thing I wanted when I was depressed, when I wanted to kill myself and when I didn't want to leave anymore, the last thing I wanted was attention from people, attention from strangers. And wearing colorful clothes would bring me just that. I didn't want no one telling me, you look pretty, I like your dress. I didn't want no one telling me that. So I dressed very muted in order to just go unnoticed. Discretion was at the top of my list and that's when I was still on the same place. Like I was still in my first uni and the only thing that had changed was my, my spirit and my mental health. So it's crazy to see this transition of how my outfits changed during depression of how classic and clean I became and I'm very proud of like thank you depression for bringing some taste into my life for bringing some taste into my wardrobe I mean it was actually a win-win so this is one of the first outfits that I shot and it's all black I mean oh it's a whole vibe guys I'm proud of this outfit up until today and then this is another one this top was actually a DIY project of mine and I paired it just with my sneakers and my joggers so muted right this one was another muted outfit in which I DIY this top I still have these tutorials like somewhere back on my videos this was another outfit and this was the first pencil skirt i owned and the only one i don't like pencil skirts because i find them very uncomfortable to walk so i'm just like all right i'm just gonna get this one for the photo and the top is also trendy for the photo so that was still a bit of a trend whore but a very depressed trend whore because the colors are so muted and up until today i love this outfit too this one was just plain and you know masculine and this one was also the same vibe all white dark blue so yeah this was the phase that i literally became a minimalist at least in my aesthetic i didn't want colors i didn't want crazy colors clashing i didn't want blah 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 and also i didn't want to buy too many things in order to be able to make blog posts that's when i started toning things down so after my depression i left uni and i came back home and surprisingly i continued on that vibe i didn't change like coming home and being surrounded by my family didn't make me happy <laughs> so i didn't go back to wearing colors like no and here are a few examples of what i was wearing at that time this season was when i fell in love with white like white became my favorite color and the first color that i would go to buy something it would have to be white this is an example of an outfit and here is like this white blazer that i loved but i lost it as you can see the outfits are much more cohesive and here i have a pop of color that is royal blue shoes oh, i love this outfit until today it's a bit too hot in mozambique to wear this but i did it for the picture and i really like it joggers crop tops just a bit more carefree and always the same color palette and this was the phase in which I started noticing that my wardrobe was getting cohesive because of the colors that I was choosing and my Instagram feed was getting cohesive because of my colors as well my best gay friend was also saying like oh my god Yara I love this outfit it's so minimal because he was also becoming a minimalist so we were doing that transition at the same time and it was so beneficial I didn't have anyone else pushing me to buy colorful stuff and things like that so I love this phase, I love this phase and after this what happened is that I went to the UK to finish my degree and obviously this was the first time in which I was in a cold country. I think it was really good that I already had the mindset of going into neutral colors because when I got there man, the shopping options are just overwhelming. Like you go to the shops and you wanna buy everything and to be honest for my first year I didn't have a retainer yet. I was buying everything I would see in Zara sales, new look sales, I was just like ah! <laughs> so only on my second year I was able to realize that no Yara you have to make smart choices about your outfits and yeah I'll start trip shopping a lot as well and overall my outfits were pretty simple and pretty classy and I'm proud of all my winter outfits I can heavily say that this was one of my first slay moments in London in which I went all black and with the royal blue shoes has a pop of color I really really love this outfit um, this outfit was another one in which I changed sneakers to shoes to take the photo but very simple very plain outfit was another one who got so much love on my instagram it was my first photo that had a thousand likes it was this one so good stuff <laughs> oh i love this outfit white and blush tones these are my favorite colors up until today 
I incorporate these colors in my summer outfits as well. I love, 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 love them. And then this was a more camel and gray one. This was camel and pink, all with the same camel coat. Around this was the time in which I bought this camel coat and I was like, all right, time to shoot this coat. And these were the latest outfits that I was putting together when I was almost leaving. A resume of my winter style. This was the best of my winter style because I had some outfits that were very ugly. I don't feel like they're relevant, okay? And yeah, that's it. This is all I had to go through in order to have the style I have today. And today I can gladly define my style as simple, classic, and elegant. That's what I try to be whenever I put an outfit together. And it's so nice to be able to define your style, guys. I swear, I urge you to be able to find three words that can define your style. And those three words can also define your shopping habit. Becoming a proper minimalist and defining my style into these three words has enabled me to make much smarter shopping decisions, shop way much less than I used to shop before because I had FOMO and I wanted to buy everything that I saw. Today I'm able to go to a store and not buy anything and not feel like I'm missing out on anything. That's because I already have a very defined style. I feel like I have achieved my style. I have achieved a style that represents who I am at this moment because right now I'm not who I was five years ago. Like five years ago, I was an attention whore. I wanted attention, I wanted validation, I wanted compliments. And today, all I want is to just look good and mind my business and I don't want that much attention. It feels really good to have a defined style because trust me, the fashion industry is out there pushing a lot of things to distract you and to make you spend your money. And when you're confident in your style, when you're confident in your aesthetics, nothing can shake you. And that's a great place to be. So that's it for my style history, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got inspired to find your own style, okay? It takes time. It started blogging in 2011, 2019. Yeah, it took me eight years to find what I feel like will be my style forever. Although, if tomorrow I won the lottery, maybe, just maybe, my style would change a little bit because money changes things, okay? So, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'm bringing more style videos soon. So, thank you so much for watching. It was amazing. It was cathartic. So, I'll see you guys on my next one. Mwah.